Well, hello and welcome to the Passive Two. Hello, I'm your uh, neighbor Hard. The Path of Two. The Path of Two. Okay, there you go. I fucking hate you. Now I got to do the intro all over again. No, no, keep it in. It's again. <laughs> a Path of Two. Uh, I'm your family neighbor Hard. Dungeon Master Peter. Today, um, right now, we're having just two of my party members because they have ended up in a situation where it's just going to revolve around them two, and then later in the video, we will get the remaining um, cast. We have Travis as May I Build High, and we have Sarah as Iris. Um, where we last left off, um, we had Iris and May High escape by the nick of their necks from the Dragon Horde, um, which the Half Dragon the half blue dragon, whatever his name is at this point, because I keep probably changing his name. Um, discovered them, they discovered him, they fought, epic battle, our lovely arcane wizard, our, um, artificer Eugene, got them out at the last minute, <clears throat> and they were safely away. Now they are currently in a pond, Eugene is unconscious for the time being and they are just kind of reeling in everything that happened in that one crazy night so we'll go with may i and iris we'll, go, we'll pick up directly where we left off where you iris is just kind of sitting in the pond in an unknown location to you guys at the current moment and may i is just standing in the pond just you know, letting you know he's there for you if you need it. Whenever you guys are ready, you guys can role play for here, and then we can go directly into a nice little dialogue of what happens after this pond. I guess we're going to go straight into dialogue. No! <laughs> No, it's just like my character is literally just sitting there crying, so I feel like there's not much she's going to be singing at the moment unless, like, yeah, um, prompted. Which yeah, is fine. Um, because May I was just hugged because she just needs someone to hold on to. Mm -hmm. um, so May I um, is a little bit hesitant. But he understands. But he he lets it happen, and he ends up taking his arms and and hugging back. He he just can't help but say over and over, "I'm so sorry," and he does that for probably. Like a thirty seconds. At this point, I mean, it's still very fresh, so Iris is just kind of like bawling her eyes out at this point. Um, and then the fact that like May I has returned the hug, like, is gonna set her, it's gonna set her off even more because this is like years and years and years of like emotion that she doesn't usually. Show, like just kind of rolling out. <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like she's had all of this bottled up for so long. Um, she's probably straight up ugly crying. Like, sorry, sorry, man, you're gonna need to wash your clothes afterwards. Um, <laughs> good, good thing we're in the lake. Not from the blood or anything, just from her tears. Well, and probably not, because, you know, she's obviously crying. Um, but, like, she's also gonna... She's gonna hug Manny even the tighter once he returns. Because she's just, like, she's that... Like, she literally is broken at this point. Like, this is the person she's spent... I mean, like, Typhon was the person like, she spent years, like, being her, her partner, and they basically had formed, like, this kind of brother-sister bond. Um, so, it, 
it's just one of those things where like she's really hurting because of it. Um, so it's really hard for her to like form words in this situation and everything. Like yeah. Uh, after a while, may I, um, in his uh, deadpan, is going to sort of take in the surrounding, um, just looking to see what what's nearby us, because he hasn't really taken the chance to really like look to see where we landed. We just landed, you know, near a lake. Yeah. What's nearby? Um. Okay. So what's nearby? is as you guys are kind of you know just looking around um you're in this small pond uh, mainly forest and a lot of um overhead grass um shrubbery bushes um just do surrounding because it's still we'll say night but you guys can kind of feel like it's going to morning that type of deal um to where you, you will know that you can still, you can see from where you guys are at, you have a direct line of where the mountains are, and you can kind of see some light shining from the mountains still, um, probably torches or other encampments of either passing travelers you can assume, or in this case, since you know that the Horde of the Dragon Queen is nearby, it's probably outpost of them. Of the dragon queen? I'm sorry, what? Of the dragon... I'm, I don't... Of the cult. Of the cultists. Cultist dragon queen, you know, cult. Mm -hmm. Don't me. I told you the name of where I'm doing this off of. Don't mm -hmm. me. Uh, Doesn't mean I'm going to read the source material. I'm Oh, good. Don't read the source material. Because May I is also doing the same campaign. I am, but I haven't looked past the first two chapters. And you're skipping the first two. So I am. I am definitely skipping the first two. So I don't really know what's going on. That is true. Um, may I may I take it in and then he um, he breathes in deeply and then breaks out. And once he feels that Iris has Iris has come down a little bit. Um, he's going to take her uh, by the shoulders. And then uh, he's going to look her in the eyes and go. I think we need to move. I'm not certain, but I don't think it's safe for us to be here. We should find a place. Uh, we should get out of here before they come searching for us. I know that's hard right now. God, I know how hard it is. But, but we have to move. So kind of like she's still very like dead inside, but like the words are like we have to move, like we have to find a new spot. Will still resonate. She might not hear it on as like an area as right now, uh, but she's gonna recognize that you know they are an exposed like open area and probably should move somewhere else. So she'll she'll just like quietly nod her head. Um, and let go of my eye so that way he can kind of like get, get out of the pond um, and then she'll just follow him um, yeah I'm going to get out first I'm going to check on Eugene because it's been a little bit uh, since we've checked in um, I don't have any uh, any light sources um Iris, do you have anything? Can you see uh, in the dark? I can see in the dark, but I can also cast dancing lights. Because I can't see in the dark. Um, and I'm not I'm not sure if it's wise 
for us to produce light, only for the fact that it may draw attention. So, so I, I think it would be best if, if you were to lead um, without causing the lights, or if we want to say screw it and put on the lights, I'm fine with that too. But at this point, I, I need to listen to you and I need to listen to what you have to say. Um, so just, I will respond to this, you know, just point me in the direction you want me to go and I'll lead us um, there and just kind of be my backseat driver, tell me when to, you know, if you want to go a certain direction, just let me know. And I'll probably end up hearing Eugene. We, we can do it together. Okay. Um, I'll take the legs. Um, um, by any chance, um, we've been here for a while. Um, we should snack up. Uh, I don't have, maybe Eugene has food. Just to have a little bit of something for energy. So, um, sorry Eugene, but I'm going to go searching through the bag. And I'm looking for rations. Eugene feels violated. I'm kidding. Um, so as you go searching for Eugene stuff, you find an assortment of stuff. Um, first, you will find in a small, like, little backpack that kind of has a screen. A little pouch that has, like, a screen in front of it. Uh, you can see his familiar, which is a cat. Um, well, at this point, actually, his familiar is a penguin. I'm changing it from a cat to a penguin. And he just sitting there in a nice little, like, ecosystem and everything. So he has a small exhibit pouch for his penguin. Okay. Um, so you, you see that. Um, that's kind of, like, on his side. It's usually um, covered up to look like a normal pouch. But since kind of all his magic is drained at point, everything that he has, like, cloaked is now visible on him. <clears throat> So one of his pouches is that little um, ecosystem for his penguin, his familiar. You have um, another pouch that looked like to just be um, a form of um, blueberry blueberries. Uh, no label, just a bunch of blueberries. <clears throat> you get your normal traveling gear. So he, he has rations on him. He has a bedroll. He has that normal type of adventuring gear. Um, he also has... I don't want to say a utility belt. Because he's not Batman. Um, but it's more like a utility hat. Um, that normally he just looks like he has a normal giant purple hat. A pointed purple hat. But... As since all his magic is faded, you know that all around his hat has different arcanic rune symbols on it. So if you guys know Arcana, you can go ahead and cast, I mean, not cast it, roll for it and see if you, these runes look familiar. <clears throat> I'm not sure you I also have a plus three, I'm just not trying to. Um, I'll point. I'll point out the rooms to you, and ask and ask you. Uh, do these do these help us with, with anything? What are, can you take a look? I can take a look and see what I can figure out. Um, I Twelve. Yeah. Um, you get a general basic of it. Um, these rooms. Are um, capsule rooms. Um, they usually are meant for storage of some kind. So if you're able to activate one um, and say the key word to it, you're able to pop out the item associated with the capsule room. And so pretty much his whole hat has pretty much a pocket dimensions 
all over it. standard like three okay i took the other one and there's one still left in the back oh yeah he also had berries so blueberries Welcome. Irene. <laughs> <laughs> Irene goes, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad to know that is still working. Um, For the time being. I just shut, I, I shut my mouth. May I has gone away. Good one. And, and then I, I take it off and put it in my pocket. Okay. Do you take yours off as well? Oh wait, yours is in your tongue, isn't it? Mine's a tongue piercing. <laughs> so uh, that's not really gonna happen. <laughs> I feel like mine has a like extra protective to like try to get off the dog. Oh. <laughs> it just takes a little longer. <laughs> so that way it just doesn't trigger. Uh, so Travis, how, how long or are you are you looking through Eugene quickly or are you doing it like just taking just a quick just a quick thing to get uh to get rationed. Okay. Cool. Um I'm not too interested in anything else other than that. Okay. Um should we follow the road and See if we can find housing or go through the woods. It's probably, and of course, she's all saying, she's saying all of this through like tears and like, you know, coming off of hyperventilating and everything. So she's still kind of short of room and everything. Yeah, yeah. But she, um, she, Iris will say, um, <sighs> Not that. Um, <laughs> She'll say it's probably smarter to stay close to the path, uh, but we might want to set up a camp just off. Um, Alright. Let's um, let's uh, head up the road. I'll uh, I'll help with your gene. I don't not much help, but I can I can try and help. Um, if we head up the road and see what happens. Alright, uh, so you guys will travel uh, for quite, we'll say, till the morning arises, um, so you guys can <clears throat> find a spot to rest. Uh, go ahead, whoever has a survival, go ahead and roll me it. It's better than mine. Can I, can I give her, can I aid her? Yeah. Is it bad? I feel like you you have Eugene on your back and he just you know slumped over your shoulders and May High is just carrying the feet. Yeah. 
And what was that, Iris? 30 20. 30 20. All right. So you guys will travel to the morning rises. Um, you can get to a little bit of a crossroads as you know, you kind of safely stay about 60 feet off the path. Uh, again, you don't know who's traveling this fast way. I'm assuming you guys want to stay hidden as much as possible. Um, so may I will, as you guys are traveling, we'll kind of point out like when to move, where's the best spots to stay hidden, which will give you guys a natural cover. Again, since you guys are 60 feet out, if anything, someone will catch you by being an off color of the environment. So they would catch the purple in Irish's skin um, before they look at the, the thing you're actually carrying. Or they may catch um, Eugene's flavorful colors that he is producing. Um, so you guys will travel a couple of hours in and you get to this like a little bit of fork in the road to where you guys are at. One will lead directly to the path. Another will lead a little bit further in to the forest. So the, the one further in is more of an off-road that can take you to a, a house, that can take you to a camp, or it can just take you pretty much anywhere. So you, you can, you have about three choices here. You can take the left to kind of just, if you feel like it's safe to go back onto the main road and just travel there. Um, you can find an area around here to camp for the day or camp for a couple of hours or you can take the trail and hopefully it will lead somewhere at this point you guys can roll a perception check to see if you can find any clues on maybe footsteps um so something that can give you a general idea of what would be safer can i can i can i can i, can I, can I, can I, can I yeah if you want I'd rather, I'd rather need. Okay. Perception, I actually have expertise, so. Oh, God damn it. A 21. A 21. Oh, perfect. That works for me. So as you guys are kind of looking around, still staying hidden, you notice that the path to the right, it doesn't look like a lot of things have ventured around that path. So there's a little bit of overgrowth in it. But you, what you can tell is it looks like there's been wheels um, from a cart or something. that kind of made that permanent indent in the ground. Um, you don't know how long ago it was, but... Um, you notice that, you know, this possibly could have been a main road of travel and then they just stopped using it for quite some time. So it could be safe to head down this road to maybe if there's an abandoned camp or an abandoned house that's just been left here and forgotten. Or you can go to the main road or you can just keep traveling the way you guys have been. So um, so down the road, you know, I see an overgrown path of just wagon wheels, um, and then there's obviously the main road. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure what we should do. Part of me saying. Like, do we 
therefore not the same where we are currently. Like, I want, I, I want to move in one direction or the other. I just don't want to stay in place. Part of me feels that we should go to the right and take the road less traveled by. Oh, oh, I think it should. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, la, la. <laughs> May I? Oh. So, still agree. We'll go down um, the path less traveled with the wagon wheels that's overgrown. Alright. So, as you guys travel down there, um, again, you guys are getting tired. Um, carrying Eugene is getting harder and harder, um, even with taking breaks down there. The road that you guys pick travels about two hours. Um, sorry, not two hours, two miles um, in. So you about probably every half mile you guys would stay, uh, take a break, keep going. Um, kind of just, again, you've been up all night, you fought, uh, you're out of spells, so... Overall, mentally and physically, all everyone's exhausted here. Um, but after the two miles, you get to a little clearing, about 100 by 100 feet. And there is an abandoned um, cottage, it looks like. Um, some of the windows are broken in. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't look like it's been kept, so there's some overgrowth as well. But it is an abandoned cottage. Um, I think that we should go towards the cottage, or at least uh, I can scout it while you stay here, take a break, and then I'll see if anyone's inside. That sounds like a good plan. Okay. Um, may I? Um, I will start going towards um, the cottage. Um, may I, at this point, has uh, when we have talked, has been completely monotone and just completely deadpan. Um, and his physicality resembles that as the same. All right. Uh, so go ahead and roll me a stealth check. If you are. You know, stealth and then quietly going to this cabin, cottage. 22. <laughs> uh, so as, you know, Iris, as you put down kind of Eugene against a tree, um, as you put him down, kind of look to where May I will go, he just vanishes into daylight. Um, so this is typical. You're used to this because, you know, your little friend does have skills. Um, this is either... An illusion that he just completely vanished, or you're just damn tired, and you're like, okay, he's he'll be back. Uh -huh. um, May I, as you approach this cabin, I mean, you're obviously on edge from the fight and everything, and you proceed with caution. Um, you get to the steps of the cabin, and they do creak a little bit, but it's not like a, an alarming creak. It's just this: no one has stepped foot on these boards in quite some time. Some of them do feel loose to you. And as you get to the door, what do you do? Oh, do you want to go through a window? I'm going to stealthily just take a look uh, inside through the window. Uh, see if I can hear anything. See if I see anything. Okay. Um, perception check. Um, so you don't see anything out of the ordinary. What you do see with Lake Eleven um, that is quite dusty. It looks like someone has not been here in some time. There's a little overgrowth in the cabin, just from the grass coming up through the boards. So it looks like no one has taken care of this place for quite some time. Um, there are some chairs and couches that look completely dusted. Um, it does look like a good place to where if you were to make this actually accessible, it looks like a nice little hideout. 
nice little vacation spot. Um, but there's your typical, you know, food studio kitchen. Um, there are some beds in here as well. Um, on the bottom floor, there is a little ladder that leads to an upper floor as well. So it's a two, it's a two-story cabin. Um, okay. Um, I'm sorry, Arthur, if you have, do you have more dialogue? Uh, no, that would be it. Okay. Um, with that, I, um, I go to the front door. Um, I check it for traps and check to see if it's locked. All right, roll that trap checking skill. Nice. Uh, investigation. Twenty-two. All right. It does not seem to be trapped, and it is unlocked. I open it. All right. Um, as you open it, go ahead. I'm not. You know. I'm not. No, it's fine. So as you open this door slowly and everything, when you get to a point to just be enough to fit you in or to open it all the way. Um, right from above you, a skeleton falls directly down in front of you. He's uh, perturbed, so he jumps back and then takes out an arrow and instinctively shoots at whatever causes the noise. All right, as you shoot at it, it pierces the skeleton, and when you kind of like adjust your eyes and calm your nerves, you notice that it's just a normal skeleton. Is the uh, is the arrow damaged? Um, let's see. Nope, perfectly fine. You did a nice clean shot. I'm gonna take the arrow back if it's not damaged. All right, Iris, you can hear from a distance what has happened. Okay, so it seems like everything. Uh, I'll go like over my diary. Be like, hey, uh, may I, is everything clear? Should I bring uh, Eugene? My eye ring is off. Yeah, he still has it off. I put it in my pocket. God damn it. Um, okay, so since I heard everything, I'm going to assume everything is okay. So then I will just pick up Eugene and make my way over there. Uh, but keeping an eye on may I just be case he gives any signals that I should be moving forward. Alright, so you will slowly move over there. Um, may I, what do you do? Uh, so I have no idea what she's doing. So I'm going to continue searching the rooms. I'm seeing if there's any signs of life. Um, and I'm searching everything. And when I come into a door that is shut, I check it for traps. I check it for locks. He is completely paranoid and does not want to make another mistake. So he will do. He will check everything for traps and locks and examine every part of every room to make sure that there's no one there. Hi. Right, so go ahead and roll me an investigation and um, another sleight of hand, so you can. We'll do a general one for investigation for all rooms and a sleight of hand for all doors. Uh, sleight of hand. Uh, checking with traps. Uh, check, uh, so the investigation would be at 18. Okay. Uh, and then I rolled a natural 11. Is this for my thieves' tools to unlock things? Um, is your... Checking for traps part, is it the investigation skill? Yeah, uh, oh. checking, checking for traps would be an investigation because I would have to go up to the thing and then, like, examine it. Oh, okay, never mind then. <laughs> Sorry, I thought they were two different skills. Uh, to investigate, because I'm actively looking for it. Okay, um, so as you, as you do so, um, this will take some time, enough time for Iris to kind of approach the front door and kind of put Eugene somewhere. Um, but as you go through this cabin um, and every nook and cranny, um, you do see there are like some skeletons in different rooms. 
it looks like there was a battle here long ago. Uh, some of them have arrows or a dagger in them, which now would be on the ground or inside a skeleton at this point. Um, there's about, let's say you find a total of about five skeletons throughout your investigation. Um, <clears throat> they're all about human sizes. Um, the, it looks like whatever is was taken or whatever these people wanted from these people who may have held up in this cabin, um, it has been ransacked. So a lot of stuff are still like scattered, clothes are still scattered, beds have not been made in quite some time. Um, things are broken here and there. But later, if you're wanting to look for anything in particular, you can roll another investigation check. I'm not really interested in that right now. Okay. Um, I, um, if Iris makes noise when she enters, May I is going to stop in whatever room he's at and then start to approach cautiously that area and see who just came in the door. Okay. So we'll, we'll say since Iris was you know, obviously approaching with caution and has a um, young body to carry and she's tired and everything. Eugene's young. You have a young body to carry. Um, she moves you know, cautious and quickly. Oh, cautiously. So you get a good amount of room searching. Um, we'll say there's about room, one room you didn't get to by the time she comes through the door. take an arrow out and I start to silently creep towards the area trying to investigate and just get to the front. Okay. As you, you know, cautiously and everything, uh, you do see Iris coming through the front door. So uh, when I first see uh, the body, my brain is not, is not correlating as to what it is. So he takes an inhale and then uh, brings the arrow back a little bit, and then sees that it's iris, and goes, <sighs> he'll put the bow and arrow away, and then he will come help. Um, he'll come help with um, with Eugene, and go, there's a bedroom over here. Um, um, come up the stairs, and then I, I guide her to a bedroom. Somewhere where we can put Eugene. <laughs> All right, sounds good to me. Peter, what was that about? What are you, what are you doing? I'm smiling because Iris is smiling. Because you're leading her towards a bedroom. I'm leading Eugene, who is being carried. I just smiled because Iris smiled, and I know where Iris went with this. Okay. Um, but Iris, you will, as. Kind of, you know, Eugene does guide you towards a bedroom. You do notice that this place has not been kept up. Um, there's that skeleton in front of the door, and as he leads you to a bedroom, um, there is another skeleton in here. So there's about two skeletons you've seen so far. Um, and this does look like someone ransacked this place. So broken pottery, tables broken, um, maybe a couple beds would be broken as well. But the bedroom he leaves you in, the bed is still intact. Just dusty and everything like that. Um, so I'm, putting, I'm not going to put Eugene on the bed right away because I don't want him to sleep in a dusty bed. So she'll just kind of like take whatever she is on and kind of just like shake it out and uh, try and make it like the area as clean as she can will be completely clean now but she's gonna try her best uh, so that way at least eugene can like rest in some something that's not gonna like infect him <laughs> Right, so we'll see you guys take the time to kind of at least clean this room. You find a room nearby and kind of get the skeleton out of the room. Kind of take about an hour to clean this place, open up the window, let some fresh air in, get all the dust and everything out. I also mentioned about five minutes into this, that he has a bedroom. We could just take it 
take out a drum on top. Maybe she wanted the bed. Says the voice in the sky. But I have, I have one more room I'm gonna go check on. And then he, he leaves to go check that final room. Alright, so he'll leave Iris to the cleaning. So you, uh, I will say, so Eugene walks up and leaves. But, uh, uh, <laughs> may I leave? I just put him to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he sleepwalks, what can I say? Hi, right, so may I, as you approach, it's kind of like the room at the end of the hall. We'll say the, the upstairs has about five rooms, two on your left, two on your right, and straight at the end of the hall um, is the nicer looking door. Um, I, checked, I checked for traps and checked to see if it's locked. All right, go ahead and investigation for that trap checking. Sixty. All right. You do... You do find some traps on it, but they look like they've already been sprung. Uh, can I? He's freaking out. Uh, is there any noise coming from the other side of the door? There is not, no. He's going to slowly open the door. As you slowly open the door, um, it, you'll get to the grand bedroom of the cabin. Um, very nice, delicate um, room. Has like silk sheets. Looks like a nice room for a nice noble. And as you kind of, you know, peek your head in and look, you can see that there's a couple of bodies in here. Uh, more skeletons in the five you found. And they look like they've been attacked by traps. There's some darts. Um, you can smell. Still reminiscing in this room, um, kind of like that powder, gunpowder in here. It looks like maybe a bullet has been shot off, or maybe a possible cannon in this room. So the areas of gunpowder are part of this room. Yes, or at least a cannon powder. Um, you may have yet to experience a gun, but we'll say cannon powder. Some sort of powder, uh, the fire or something. Yeah. Actually, what level is you here? Uh, let's see, you guys. Oh, let me double check. Let me see what I have. He's obviously more fire in some levels than us. Uh, let me see what I put Eugene at. It's been. Okay. I don't know why I did. In fact, Eugene is a level zero character. Um, I have Eugene at level four. That reminds me, I do gotta level him. <laughs> I have him at three, but he needs to be level four. So I'm going to completely disassemble the traps. Um, even though the traps have been triggered, I'm just gonna completely remove them from wherever they were put. Okay, yeah, um, when you kind of look at the traps, you do notice, like, um, these traps are a little bit intricate, um, ones you haven't seen before. Um, I guess they look like blow darts, but they look resemble more of cannons to you. Um, they've been hidden all across this room, so as you investigate the room, you notice that there was quite a bit of them. They were enough to do a small amount of damage, but not enough to kill. It's, it's just like this is these traps were more of a utility based thing. 
than actually a we're gonna kill you. He will, um, he'll, he will start to take it apart and then realize that he hasn't told Iris anything about what he's doing. Um, and then he'll get out the earpiece and put it back on and turn on the eye ring. May I has reconnected. Looks like in the master bedroom, there's a bunch of traps. Uh, most of them have already been activated. I'm just going to take apart all of the traps. Um, so I'll be doing that. Respond, but okay. Thanks for the info. Um, I'm going to continue kind of like cleaning up around the place, kind of maybe keeping the first level kind of uh, slightly dingy. Not that anyone's level going to just look like it's been populated or anything. Uh, and then, uh, Just kind of cleaning the rest of the second floor, but uh, just to see what's around yourself. I, I will recommend at some point rest. We've been up all night. We've been carrying around Eugene. It has taken a lot of strength. I recommend at some point getting a, a, a rest, even if it's now and then picking up on it later. But I leave that up to your discretion. So which you will ask, okay, well, which other rooms uh, are like bed rooms or have like a suitable place to sleep? There, there's five on the second floor. Um, two on each side. There's the master bedroom, which looks like it belonged to a noble. Um, if you want, if you want that one, you can. But there are, besides the one that um, Eugene is in, there's four other options on the second level. Only can I know what Peter's trying to do. How many of the other rooms have broken beds, where they're basically not really functional? What do you mean what Peter's trying to do? Um, I'll, so, there's a good enough amount of beds to where if you're going to spend the time to fix them, it'll be an easy fix, enough to at least provide a decent, comfortable rest. Um, you can find, again, you will have to mend these beds, so it will take time to do so. So you can either some these beds some beds are broken. There's about let's say two beds that aren't broken. Um, the one Eugene's had, and then the nobles bed. Yeah, the other ones are broken, but they're savable. So you can fix them. It just means your character will be up a little bit longer. Um, and the other one that's ready, is that the one that just happens to be in the, the grand bedroom? Yeah. There is also a couch. Yeah. Well, um, well, if you uh, want, you can take this, and then I'll, uh, I'll work on fixing the other bed so that... Um, so that, yeah, um, so again, you can take this, and then I start to grab some of the traps, and I start to drag them out of the room, so that Iris can go to bed. 
<laughs> Alright, stop giving me that look. Uh, so, Iris, you will have the massive bedroom, and while Mayhai fixes or oh, takes out everything else, um, are you going to fix those the beds, or are you just going to crash on the couch, crash in the bed where Eugene's at, stand guard outside of Iris's door? Where, where is Mayhai going to go? Mayhai's going to go into the next, whatever room is next. He's going to fix the bed. Um, it can just all of this is a motion to him. Um, he's, he'll fix the beds, he'll get them in working order. And not just one, he's going to fix every single bed because he needs something for his. He needs something to distract himself. All right. And, uh, Ooh, Iris, you gonna pass out for the eight hours? Um, before everyone joins, I feel like, in all honesty, at least from Iris' standpoint, this is the part where she would like. She's obviously broken and like wants some kind of comfort, so. Because Peter's a asshole and he designed this to be this way, and new Sarah, awesome. who is also slightly Iris. Um, we all know where this is going. Um, and then would you... at least ask May I to like to stay in the room. Whatever happens, happens. If we want to agree on that before people join in. Um. We can still roleplay. I just gave them the link. I still gotta accept them to Zoom. So we're still gonna roleplay at least the first the first okay. two days. You guys still have. So we'll roleplay. I'm not trying to rush you guys or anything. Again, I want this to be genuine and natural. So I just put the invite in there. I'll accept them when we are ready for them to show up. Okay. Um, the iris is definitely strong. Um, she won't be able to sleep. So she'll probably just go over the iron and be like, may I ring this way? I can't, I can't sleep. After everything that's happened. I, I understand. Um, yeah, let me go, let me go ahead and set my stuff down. Um, he stops his work. Uh, he'll move over to the bed and, or to the master bedroom and give a. Still psychotic. Uh, may I will enter and I'll close the door. Yeah, I am, uh, I can't see to sleep myself. So. I wish that's vaguely being like shit happens. Iris is in need of comfort. Take that where you will. And then um, <laughs> and then may I will will reciprocate only if um only if Iris shows and needs it, uh, it'll reciprocate, whatever that may be. Okay, so you guys all fucking. Yay! And no, I didn't plan this, but. Travis and I actually talked this out like prior to this. No. Like if it ever came to this situation with our characters. Actually, I left the couch open, so it was who, whoever wanted the couch to fix the beds. Um. So yeah. So you guys, you guys share a a nice night. We'll say. Oh, actually, in this case, a morning, a lovely morning of passion, feelings, or just whatever comfort you guys needed together. Um. You guys will share. Um. You guys, you know, will get a nice sleep. So it's kind of like, you know, waking up to each other 
whether whatever that means to you guys as characters, um, whether it's a nice bonding experience, um, a notch off of someone's belt, however you guys want to take that waking up will be up to you guys. Which is nice, um, you know, every good story will have, you know, when two characters go through stuff, attracted to each other, or just have that, you know, moment together. It's fine. I like it. You guys play your characters as well. Um, as you guys wake up to each other in bed, um, what's the first thing you guys want to do? So we'll say you guys kind of overslept, as in you took the whole day to sleep. Um, from not only the battles and everything, but the physical activity you guys did just before you went to bed. So you guys had a nice 24 hours of sleep of just pure knocked out. So you guys actually do wake up to the next morning. Um, I definitely check on, uh, before we check on Eugene, I'm going to ask because... I do it with everything. I think a lot of people want to know. Do you guys want to roll me performance checks? You guys don't have to. I'm okay with them. It's my uh, expertise. It's <laughs> fine. Um, I think I rolled a 19. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Because I'm not an expert. Performance, you say. Charisma, performance. Uh, 21. 23. Oh shit, hot dog. You know what, you guys, you guys just, think of a masterpiece. You guys knew exactly what you guys were both doing. And it was great all around. Everyone involved in the party had a lovely time. There was flyers, pamphlets, you guys would judge every 10, you know, just a, everyone involved rated you guys the number one show in this life. Even the Russian judge, who's normally the harshest critic. Yes, he, <laughs> he, he judged you guys. He was like, oh, this is so good. So good, y'all. Yeah. Um, but no, you guys, you know, you guys did wonderful for each other. Um, but the next morning, you guys will go check on Typhon. Not Typhon, God, Eugene. Um, he's still so passed out. Right? <laughs> um, Eugene is still unconscious and everything. Um, it looks like no one came in to invade or to look into this cabin. Um, so for this day, before we include everyone else, what do you guys want to do for this last particular day before we go into the three days? of introductions or monologue that I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to just like, at least from, from Iris' perspective, she would like to kind of like fall away of like maybe going out a little bit and trying to find some kind of food to stock up on, but mostly just like, Chill out, maybe talk a little bit about random shit. Maybe like talk about remembering um, their fallen friends and like everything they've done for them and whatnot. Um, so that's kind of the extent of what she would want to do at this point. Maybe come. That's about it. 
Uh, may I will uh, exchange in, in the banter. Um, he he still carries on his uh, deadpan expression, but it seems like maybe it'll get better. Um, he uses part of the time to distract himself. Um, after exchanging the stories, after Iris saying she wants to stock on food, he'll ask if um, she wants May I to help, or he can get the kitchen clean so that we can at least cook some of the food that has been hunted. And whatever Iris wants to do in that regard, uh, may I will follow um, without questioning. Um, well, first we should probably move the skeletons for any reason. I know I wasn't there. But I was thinking it was shared with me, the skeletons, and I also saw some of them have, like, vinegars and whatnot. So pick up all that equipment, so that way we can go. And I, yeah, I would just feel more comfortable with my eye on Jane Wizard, just because, you know, everything's more effective and safe in Paris. Um, and I'm not going too far from the cabin so they can keep a watchful eye on it, just in case. Yeah. Um, um, he'll agree, and then he will, he will do all of those things. That's all May I has. And if Iris wants to cuddle, he will cuddle. <laughs> yeah, cuddle. Good for the soul. Awkward. Me as a human being, as yes, Sarah, will cuddle with anyone. I don't give two shits if you're my friend or your significant other. And if I need it, I will just cuddle. I don't, I honestly don't care. And I feel like that's Iris's kind of thing too. It's like, just because of her, like, who she is, she just needs that physical connection with someone. So, that's also her inclination is just like, and since this bond has now been established with May I, you know, she feels comfortable to be that. Okay. Um, so during your day two, is there anything particular you guys want to talk about with each other? I mean, I went forward, like, talking about, you know, maybe, like, Iris is telling memories of um, Typhon because she's on him for so long and uh, May I doesn't really know him that well. So, like, tell him about the adventures they went on and, uh, you know, all the stuff they did together uh, and, like, the bond they created because of it. Uh, so she's gonna, she's more so telling, like, more hero stories because she knows that Titan would rather, like, because of who she is as a bard, he would rather her tell his story and make it legend than, than anything. And, um, and then May I will exchange stories or exchange his worry about being far away from Tolis. Um, not, not because of his business, but because um, he sort of, the way that Iris feels about uh, Typhon that brother-sister relationship is similar to the relationship that he has with uh, Hazel, uh, who is his receptionist. Um, and talks a little bit about how Hazel is in danger. Um, and he talks about how there was a guy by the name of Vidpik 
whom may I had made a deal with years ago to bring this little human girl who had who had uh, the tiefling horn stitched into her skull and as part of the deal was to bring her back to him as if she was property and was with a, another adventuring party and found that he, he couldn't he couldn't do this this was not a deal that that he could continue with and then the dead of night he uh, he took Hazel away from the party um, and led her further in to Tolis and disguised her as her receptionist. Um, but now she she formally goes by the name of uh, Priscilla as a way to to hide her identity. Conversation and unless we to each other, like Iris will be. Iris obviously like has no idea, no idea of any of this, and like is surprised by the fact that like may I have like a pass in my dream before being like a town's boy, basically. <laughs> um, uh, and obviously she like. <laughs> Because this was established early on. Oh, well, I can't remember names. Um, <laughs> so, like, affectionately kind of call him Mr. High. Because that's all she does. Because that's just, like, the kind of nickname she gave him when they first met. Because she was like, ah, I'm not going to remember that name. Um, <laughs> like, and she's going to hug him and she's going to make sure that, like, you know, he knows that he's safe with her and that she, you know, has finally broken down her walls and, like, trusted him. Uh, All right. So you guys will... I feel like it's safe to include everyone now (laughs) if they're ready. Um, They are not. This is going to be interesting. So we'll we'll continue with you two. Um, so as you guys, you know, spend that first and second day together, um, getting to know each other, making that physical bond and emotional bond, cleaning. We are going to to do this, but my, my Instacart has been outside for about 45 minutes, and I need to bring it in. Your what? My food. Go get your food! Groceries. It's my groceries. It's been outside for 45 minutes. Okay. I didn't want, I didn't want to stop because we had good, uh, we had, uh, it's not a good back and forth, yeah. So I, I need to go do that. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, go, take like 10 go go get your food. I can I can monologue for a little bit. Um, because you know I'm I'm great at that. Um, so um, this will be a great time to kind of get a recap on what entirely happened um, in this game for those of you who are just joining in and kind of getting to this point. Um, our adventures, excluding Iris. Um, all started either in Tolis or outside of Tolis, meeting up together, going to the Rusty Boot, um, agreeing to do a job to fix, kind of fix up the Rusty Boot, went to the cellar, got on this crazy mission, fought cobalt fought cultuses, and did all this other crazy stuff in the first couple of sessions, and met Iris and Typhon, which are dragon hunters. So this game revolves a lot around the Horde of the Dragon Queen, plus Tolis, plus a lot of different things um, throughout pop culture. We had a session revolved around Quella de Vil. We had um, a job <laughs> searching session to where everyone got jobs. Um, but the main thing with the group was um, there was Iris and Typhon. 
and then there was the rest of the group. So having Iris and Mei together for these two days with Eugene, who they just met a day ago, two days ago at this point, um, showing this nice bond, what they've been through, really is great, really, to see the character development between these two. Because as my players know, um, a lot of the sessions I have an outline for, and then whatever happens, happens. So it could have been Ed Kara and Iris here. It could have been Ed Kara and Mei. It could have been any of those combinations. But it ended up being Mei, Build High, and Iris, which is a great um, combo. It's a great duo. I don't know how Clyde's going to feel about it, but Clyde will. I'm all team Clyde at this point. I'm kidding. Iris is Iris. May I is May I. I agree. Is, is and Iris is great. And like, um, I can tell you which direction it is most likely going to go down, but then again, I didn't believe it was surprise. Yeah, I, 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 like, I like surprises. Even if. I don't know it. I love my players to give me surprises, especially as long as it's honest with their characters. I'll never punish them. Um, but at the same time, I'm, if they're doing stupid shit, I'm going to let them do stupid shit. Uh, we found out last session they kind of did a little bit stupid shit. But I think it was all for the best. And it brought us to this lovely moment where two of our characters are getting more close to each other because we're about to have we should be having um one new character join because Adkara is no longer with us at this point typhon is no longer with us so we have just iris and mayhai right now until the rest of the group shows up but since mayhai is back at the current moment um, go ahead and enjoy your food while I monologue your last, your other three days and everything. Um, no rush and everything. So for those three, for the remaining three days, obviously you guys are getting more and more close to each other, um, both physically and mentally. You guys fix up this cabin um, a little bit better. You hunt, you know, you spend your days telling stories. And kind of marking landmarks in your territory, maybe setting up a couple of traps here and there to make sure that you guys, you know, you guys are all safe. And towards the like the beginning of the fifth day, yeah, you know, you know, you guys are feeling a little bit much better. Uh, I will say that you guys, even with the comfort and everything, may have a bit of night terrors here and there of the experience you guys have. Um, but having someone close to you really helps that bond between you guys. Um, we'll say that you guys, you know, clean off Eugene as best as you can, whether it's a full bath or not. Um, that'll be up to you guys. Um, if you guys do go through Eugene's stuff, any more thorough aspect, I'll let you know what you guys find doing that. But we can do that on the fifth day. <laughs> okay. So Eugene will yeah. just because like she feels like Eugene is at this point like her son or like her little brother. So she, she at this point she kind of feels no shame about anything. Yeah, so at least when Eugene wakes up he'll be spelling nice and pretty. Yeah. Did I get a bath? Is that how Did sleepy you works? Sound like that? <laughs> Man, I should go to sleep more often if I could, if I automatically become based. Oh, I I had nothing on what you just said. May I? But um, you guys, you know, I think it's more than a cantrip. Hey, um, you guys do kind of you know these four days by yourself. Again, no interruptions, no harm of threat coming. You know, it's nice. 
for the first time in a while, you know, you guys kind of, I would assume, feel relatively at home, even though, you know, there's always lurking of danger. It's just nice to have, like, you know, roof over your head, not having to worry about traveling on the side of a mountain or cultists nearby, or even in Tolis, where it should be safe, but there's always crime. So it does look nice, but on the fifth day, I'm so okay, so they haven't yet sent them back. On the fifth day, when Iris, I'm assuming Iris is the one going out and hunting. Um, go ahead and roll me a perception and investigation check, Iris. This is oh, why. I think, what was that? I think, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, Iris expressed that she wanted to do it together, just without. Yeah, oh, so okay. both of us would be there. Uh, so we wouldn't go too far away from the the, the cabin itself. Okay, so you both go ahead and uh, roll me the uh, perception and investigation. I will guide you on the perception. Okay. Or aid you. <laughs> Perception's not my strong suit. That's right. Um, all right. Um, so what was the per um, perception again? Mine was a 15. And an investigation was? Oh, no, sorry. My, my perception was a 13. My investigation was a 15. Okay. Perfect. So as you guys are going out hunting, obviously, before you leave, you check on Eugene. He still is sleeping, um, but you can notice that it's more of a um, calmer slept, not just like he's in pain. He, most of his wounds have healed. Um, it, he does have a little bit more pigment in his skin, so he's coming back. It looks like today is the day, just by looking at him, he should be awakened, um, but just don't know what time. As you guys go out hunting, we'll say about, you guys usually spend an hour hunting, just make sure uh, it'd be like hunting slash walking the perimeter. Um, as you get to the perimeter where the main road goes in, we'll say you guys go about half mile, maybe a mile out from your home, your cabin. Uh, you guys do notice footprints around. Um, you guys know it's about two different groups of footprints. Two different or two different groups? Two different groups. Each group has about six sets of footprints. So it looks like one leading, five behind, and then about ten feet apart from that first set, one leading, five behind. So it doesn't, they look like about normal humanoid size footprints. Um, they do look like they are marching towards the way of the pond. But you don't know if they're going to turn and then come to the cabin. So you know they are around. You can go ahead and follow the footprints if you want. Or you can head back to the cabin or continue hunting. I think I'm having some cabin. Yeah, there's way too many people. All right, as you guys head back to the cabin, I would like going? to move back to the cabin still. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. Uh, go ahead and roll me that stealth check. For both of us? 
Uh, yeah, we'll have you go through it. <laughs> so, Mayha, you noticed that um, in this panic, uh, Iris is kind of stepping on all the twigs as she's like rushing towards his back because she's no what's at stake back there. As you're, you know, diligently being a lot quieter. So you can tell her to kind of just slow down, which will give you about, let's say, 35 feet apart from her if you want. Or she can continue at her pace with you, making a lot more noise. I'm going to put my hand, my hand up. And then I'm going to use the, the IRA to say, you see this and I'm like, hold, okay. <laughs> Iris, I, I can hear you. You're sitting on a lot of twigs. Let's, let's slow it down a little bit. Okay. Don't worry. Anything comes out, I got you. Okay. She'll take a deep breath and start like moving slightly more cautiously. <laughs> I just, I just okay. Uh, so may I will continue about 35 feet ahead of you while you kind of slowly make your way over there, avoiding logs and twigs and rocks. And I will continuously check on Iris just to make sure that uh, she's in hindsight and I can see there's no one else around her, making sure that she's okay. Yeah, she's, you know. I'm guessing Iris is... Yeah, she's doing okay. I was going to say Irene, but, I mean, that's a different person. Um, yeah, Iris is doing great. As you, you know, travel your way back, um, you guys do notice that there are about ten figures outside of the cabin. They look of studded leather. Let me pull it up. Um, okay, so I got that. Oh, that's Eugene. Yeah. Um, so about four of them, sorry, four of them looks like um, they have leather armor, bows, and a short sword on them. So they kind of look like scouts. The other looks to be so you have four about that so then the other six they look to be more of a heavier built gentlemen's uh, leather armor they also have a mace on their sides and a heavy crossbow um, looking at them for the fours, they kind of look like a band of bandits. So you have what looks like to be four scouts, uh, six thugs, and what looks to be one second, I am two. <clears throat> Uh, make me a perception check when you both can. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, antlers. Wisdom. 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 was the perceptive one. And she let me down with the six. What did Iris give? A one. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. She has a plus six, so it would technically be seven. <laughs> uh, so w with that one, you kind of get distracted and just look at um, Mei's fine-tuned butt. And just go, hmm, that's a nice piece of ass. That's not how the realm of possibility with her character. So yeah, I'll accept that. Okay, I'm glad. Because if not, that would have been really, I mean, fun to say. Mm, nice piece of ass, but and then really awkward. Be like, that's not what she's thinking. Yeah, that would just be like, fuck. I need to know my 
I can't. It's not about the realm of possibilities. So it will say that's what happens when you get a one. Something like sexual or something like, ooh, that's a nice piece of butt. That's amazing. Yeah, I can, I, I can agree with that. Okay. Um, may I even... May I, um, you know, as you get, the first, since you're the first one up there to the cabin... Um, even with that low um, viewing of your procession, you do notice that there are two cloak figures up ahead. Um, they kind of look familiar, but you can't yet put them on where you found them. Um. Okay, so my my question is: Are any of them wearing the garments of of the uh, of the dragon cult? Uh, go ahead and roll me another perception. <laughs> One better, so seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, luckily, I'm going to lower the DC because you know you're looking for something in particular, and they wouldn't hide it. Uh, the two at the door are so you have the six of them um, <clears throat> so I the ten of them um, thugs and scouts outside the cabin just kind of you know talking as the two leaders are at the door um, kind of just looking around peeking in noticing that, you know, this place looks a lot cleaner, so someone might be here. Um, I use the eye ring to tell Iris, even though she's not here, <laughs> that our safe house has been compromised. Oh, wait. Uh, I guess I'll... Uh... Yeah, on that note, we're going to take a small break and just catch up our two players who just came in on what's going on. So tune in on part two. <laughs>